I'm delighted to say that we are joined now by the Sri Lankan Prime Minister, Rinil Rikman Singh. Uh, Mr. Rikman Singh, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, I guess congratulations on, on being appointed Prime Minister. I'm sure you would have uh, liked it to be in, in very different circumstances. Circumstances which we were just discussing are, are pretty dire uh, for your country. Who is to blame for the current situation? Well, I would say the last administration is to blame. And uh, they've run down the economy. Uh, we've come to a point where we are bankrupt, which has never happened to Sri Lanka before. We have no dollars, we have no rupees. Uh, and, and if the current administration is to blame, then have we seen enough punishment for them yet? Uh, of course, the president uh, is still in power, his brother, the Prime Minister, may have stepped down, but their family has essentially run the country for two decades. Should the President resign? Well, that's a controversy because the people at Goldface, all the youths, of the view that President should resign. That's a view also held outside and by some of the political parties. On the other hand, the by association of the view that the executive presidency should be abolished. They do not mention anything about the president resigning. So there, there are two different views. I, I have suggested that once we pass the 21st Amendment, which should restore the original 19th Amendment, strengthening parliament, strengthening the powers of the prime minister, then all party leaders and the president should have a discussion and come to some arrangement on the future course. <laughs> In the meantime, clearly, there are massive protests across the country, uh, often against uh, the president him himself, and, and seeing very firm responses, a lot of arrests, uh, uh, tear gas at times, and some firm uh, handling by police. W what is your view towards those protesters? Can you understand their anguish at the moment, or, or is it always wrong? to take to the streets in, in the way that some are? No, no, I, I can understand the anguish of the protesters, the young and the old, the young who see their future being taken away, and the old who is suffering, the middle class who just see their lifestyle collapsing, farmers without fertilizer. There are many, many uh, demonstrations outside police stations outside petrol stations and other places, those are small ones. And it shows the anger, the despair, and the hopelessness that the people feel. The demonstration that you have shown now is by a militant youth group who generally carries out at least five to six demonstrations a year. And they, uh, certainly their uh, aim is to ensure the water cannons are used on them. But that does not mean that there are no protests in Sri Lanka. They are, they are small protests run by people at the moment when they can't bear the burden any longer. We are not in a, we, we certainly are not in a very stable position. Um, I mentioned in, in the introduction, Prime Minister, that uh, inflation is at 30%, perhaps due to rise to 40%. And you mentioned, of course, the blame that falls on the past administration. Do you think the effects of the war in Ukraine have been felt yet in Sri Lanka? Or could things get worse in the short term? Well, we are feeling the uh, rise in the price of fuel. We are feeling that and we know it will go higher. Our main concern also is that we have not had fertilizer for cultivation. And this coming uh, season, the rice cultivation season, will not have the full production. Therefore, from about August onwards, there's a possibility of a food crisis in Sri Lanka. That's about the time that the global food crisis will also take place. And we have to see how we survive till about March uh, next year. And, and what is your message, Prime Minister, in the short term to potential uh, international partners that could come to, to your aid on a week when you've had to miss interest payments uh, due on, on your debt? Uh, it's a tricky position, I guess, to seek seek help at that time, uh, as well as missing those sorts of payments? Well, we were in default anyway, and we didn't have the money to pay. 
We have to acknowledge that. I feel ashamed about it, but nevertheless, this is uh, reality. I th we've been engaging our partners, and they've responded well. We've been engaging with the IMF, but as you know, it takes time. India has been the quickest uh, to respond. We've had money, fr uh, money from them, which has enabled us to carry on. Uh, but we, we think in the next few months, there'll be uh, responses by the other donors. Um, at the moment, would you say it's safe for tourists to come and visit Sri Lanka? Uh, well, those who want to have an exciting time could come here, and maybe they could uh, even uh, take part in the demonstrations. <laughs> they could hold placards which says for the president of Sri Lanka to go home, or you could hold a placard asking the prime minister of your country to go home. All that is option that's available. Well, I mean, it's good to see you being being lighthearted, but it, but it was actually a, a serious question. I mean, tourism is an important part of uh, any emerging market's uh, income. It, you're not encouraging people to visit, or, or are you? I mean, I, I, it's a genuine question. We, we, it's not that we, we are not discouraging people from visiting, but we understand with the shortage of foreign exchange and some of the demonstration that is going on and the shortage of essentials that they may not visit Sri Lanka at this time. Um, I, for my final question, and it's, you sounded very, been very honest about the troubles and uh, it's encouraging to hear the frankness. Uh, and of course, we wish you success in solving the problems. But I just wanted to, to return to the question of, of the president and his family, because in an interview you gave to the BBC, uh, I think four days ago, you said there's no point looking at the books because the books are cooked. I, I guess my question is, what did you mean exactly by that? And are you suggesting outright corruption by the president? In which case, surely there should be much greater punishments for him and his family. No, many corporations, statutory corporations, have not presented the correct accounts. Similarly, there are questions about the uh, figures shown by the Treasury. We all define that what was uh, supposed to be uh, 2.6 billion trillion revenue has come down to 1.6 trillion. Uh, similarly, uh, we have to look at the uh, books of the other entities within the uh, treasury, whether different individuals did it or one person coordinated it, we do not know. But it has been happening for over uh, 10 years, uh, for two years. I, I don't think it is basically uh, been an effort to show that the Sri Lankan economy is normal when it was not. Mm -hmm. Then many bills were non unpaid, and the government was not uh, informed of the, of the inability to pay bills. So these are really issues of uh, books being kept, the accounts. That's why I use the term, the books have been cooked. Certainly it have been cooked, and it was to show that the economy was normal when in uh, fact it was not. Prime Minister, thank you so much for joining us uh, this evening on, on Sky News uh, and uh, best of luck.